Welcome back. And after a full 24 hour cure, we're now ready to carry on the further uh, work on our top sides repair. I'm wearing gloves, I'm wearing goggles, I'm wearing a mask, and I've got a full Tyvek oversuit. Really good policy. Now this involves removing the peel ply, but this just rips away once the epoxy is fully cured. Big advantage is it leaves a textured surface underneath, but a better advantage is that any amine blush occurs on the surface of the peel ply. Really good here. So now you can see me grinding the area with the intention of removing enough laminate to bring it below the level of the existing gel coat. And you see me doing this very, very carefully, so I'm doing it fairly slowly so I can judge exactly the level that I need. And I'm using also the straight edge to give me a good guide. We're now uh, back in the workshop with our repair, uh, ground back just below the level of the gel coat. You can see quite clearly around here we've got this bright white edge to the laminate on our repair. And notice how I'm being very careful not to touch this to contaminate the edge. We've got a really good sound repair that's ballistically strong here. I just want to make sure that there's no excess epoxy around the edge. So I'm going to use one of these simple decorator scrapers just to make sure there's no excess epoxy around the edge. You just hear it just scraping just away any excess epoxy. So that's nice and clean. I'm then going to dust this with a clean brush. Notice I haven't touched this and I haven't actually used any solvents that might contaminate this. Solvents are a good way of contaminating a bond, especially the cloth that you use with solvents. Some solvents contain impurities. So now, once I've got this to this stage, I'm going to mask this up ready for the next step. If I was a professional boat repairer, might be to fill this area with polyester gel coat. That's another technique all on its own, and it does require a high degree of experience to get a very good colour match and to get in a totally invisible repair. But for a, an aspiring boat repairer, it's a good idea just to fill this area with one of our fillers and then make that good and then possibly use paint over the surface. A good quality two component paint will get you a really good colour match and potentially a good finish. So that's my area masked up. To carry on with our repair in the logical steps, I'm now going to prime this area here. And I'll do that just with one pump of resin, one pump of hardener. So I'll dispense that nice and easily, blend the two together. You see how I'm being really diligent in mixing this. My first step is to prime this surface. And I'm going to do that with a small brush again that I'll nip up with the mole grips. And I'm going to brush a thin film onto our repair. This will prime the surface ready for our filler. And you can see here that strong colour change that indicates the epoxy is wicking into any exposed fibres. This is a really, really good policy to do this because it provides a really good base for your filler. Now once having done this, I would leave this to become nice and sticky to about the same tackiness as masking tape. Now I've got a surface here that's now as sticky as masking tape. So I'm now ready to apply my filler. And my chosen filler is West System 409 Microsphere Blend. This is a pure white filler, which is very nice to use on this white gel coated boat. But it's also quite easy to sand, but still quite tough. Now I'm going to mix that 
with my resin hardener mix. One pump of resin, one pump of hardener, and blend the two together. Now within my filler pot, I've got a handy little plastic scoop. So I'm gonna firstly add a single heaped scoop of this because the consistency that I'm looking for is rather like thick, smooth peanut butter. In other words, a consistency that will stay on a vertical surface. Now one scoop of filler to this mix simply isn't enough because we can see that's going to run off our mixing stick so consequently it's going to run off our work. So I'm going to add another scoop of filler. Now this looks as though it may not blend in but I can assure you it will blend in and so we, we find that we get a really substantial really really stodgy mix rather like a smooth peanut butter consistency. You can see now we've got something that stays on our mixing stick and won't slump on the work. So I've used really two fairly heaped scoops of filler with one pump of resin and one pump of hardener. Now I can just use my mixing stick to apply that to the work, like so. Then I'm going to use one of these plastic squeegees to smooth this out, but I'm going to use the other squeegee to take off the excess. This is a really top tip and it's kind of a plasterous technique, but it really does make your work nice and smooth and efficient. So we just start off by screeding that over, but I can keep replacing the material onto my spare squeegee. Now the reason I've put the masking tape on there is it guides my depth of fill and it gives me a clearly defined area within which to sand. Just add a little bit more filler to that. Notice I'm following the curvature of the boat as well. That makes sure that I've filled the main part of my repair. There we are. My repair is now filled and I'm ready to allow this to cure for a full 24 hours before I carry on with the next step, which will be to fare this nice and smooth.